Welcome to Apex Telecom. Uh, so for today's uh, uh, lesson, we shall be looking at uh, the 2G GSM Radio Access Network. Uh, so for this uh, particular training, we are going to look at the BSC and the BTS. So it's a short uh, tutorial, but we are going to have some basic understanding about the BSC and the BTS. So I'm going to be your instructor for this particular training. Stay tuned. So let's have a basic uh, understanding about the 2G radio access network. We need to have this basic understanding to have a clear picture of what we are talking about. Now, there are two types of radio access network under the 2G technology. So if you are an operator and you want to uh, come up with a 2G network under the RAN side, you can either go with the GRAN, which is the generic radio access network, and the GRAN, which is the, word, the GSM H radio access network. Now, the GRAN basically it uses the base transmission stations and controllers to manage radio links for CS and PS network, whilst the GRAN supports only the real time packet data. So, basically, under the 2G RAN network, most operators uh, who go into what voice and data they prefer to go with what the GRAN technology. But if you want to rely solely on data, then you go for the GRAN, which is the GSM H radio access network. So these are the basic two things we need to understand about the 2G RAN network. Now the 2G RAN network is part of the uh, the base station subsystem. So the base station subsystem, which is what the BSS, is composed of the two main components. That's what the BSC and the BTS. So you can say the BSS is equal to the BSC plus the BTS. Or you can say BSS is equal to BSC plus the RBS. The RBS is the, the generic name of uh, the BTS, which is given by Ericsson. So basically, on the base station subsystem, you can have what? The BSC, that's the base station controller, plus the base transceiver station. So these two components makes up the BSS. Now, one BSC can connect to many BTS in a 2G network. So you can have as many as uh, B BTSs in the network connecting to what? One BSC. So depending on the, the capability of that BSC or the capacity and some lines that you have on a particular BSC node, uh, it can be determined that that particular BSC can connect to, let's say, two, three, or four, or five BTSs in the 2G RAN network. Let's have a quick look at uh, the position of uh, the BSC and the BTS. So, as you can see from this uh, clear diagram, uh, you can see the BTS is, is just like a, 
a box okay it's just like a box that is attached to the the tower on your left hand side so we have the tower plus the radio antennas you can see they are mounted at the top normally people call it sector so like sector one sector two sector three so you have this uh, the radio antennas attached to the tower and then you have the bts which is uh, beneath or at the base of uh, the tower so when you visit every tower or every cell site you see that uh, you have a particular uh, room or we call it shelter house or shelter room that houses this uh, bts and the bts because it generates heat sometimes they put in this uh, air conditioners to to cool to cool them enough so the bts is just at the base of this tower and it is working hand in hand in the 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 the, the antennas so the bts together with the tower plus the radio antennas we turn this hole as what the cell site now on your right hand side you can see we have the abs the abs is just the interface between the bts and the bsc so the bsc normally is kept uh, in the room or let's say the data center so in this particular diagram we have the bsc connecting to the bts through the abs interface so let's have a quick look at uh, this particular diagram uh, on your left side you can see we have uh, a cell site so the cell site is in the center uh, you can see we have some radio antennas mounted on the tower together with the the bts sitting at the base so this depicts a complete cell site so from this cell site you can see you can have a coverage or reception with the handsets uh, or if you want if your laptop or maybe on the vehicle you have a radio antenna there so all these uh, equipment communicate with this particular uh, bts so on your right you can see that we have bsc co uh, connecting to many bts's in the network so you can have many bsc's in a particular network but each each particular bsc connects to a particular segment or a particular number of uh, bts's in the network so you can see these two diagrams depict uh, a clear picture of uh, the functionalities of uh, this bts now the bts houses the radio transceivers that define a cell and handles the radio link protocols with the mobile station so within this particular bts that we talk about all the radio transceivers the transmitters the, uh, the receivers that uh, are communicating with the radio antennas which are mounted on the tower all the exchange of information that uh, the devices that we we have on your screen they communicate with these towers through the functionality of the bts so the bts is in charge of all this uh, transmission and receiving of what information or signals now in a large urban environment you can have quite a great number of what bts is, which can be deployed so you can have one particular city that uh, you can have many bts's mounted at what vantage areas depending on what the planning that is being done in the, the network 
how many kilometers or how many distances you're supposed to separate each PTS. So all this is planning. We plan this in the network and then we mount this particular BTS at particular vantage areas to serve the subscribers. Yeah, uh, so let's go through the functions of the BTS. Uh, so the first one is uh, the BTS helps in encoding, encrypting, multiplexing, modulating, and feeding the RF signals to the antenna. So in summary, what this means is that uh, our BTS is in charge of converting the information it receives into what? Into particular order or in particular form. That is more about the encoding part. Now, on the encrypting side, it converts the information into a secret code or it hides or protects the information, the meaning of the information which is being transmitted. Now, under the multiplexing, Basically, the, it's multiple signals are combined into one signal, okay, in a shared medium. So you have many, many signals which comes together to form one uh, particular signal and then they pass through a common medium. Now, under modulating, what this means is that our BTS converts the data or the information it receives into radio waves or into pulses so that is the meaning of that now the second one is a uh, transcoding and rate adaptation now under transcoding uh, basically the bts takes uh, compressed data okay that is the encoded content and what decompress it or sometimes make a change to 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 the data so that's one of the transcoding aspects. Then the rate adaptation, it determines the data uh, transmission rate. And then the next one is uh, about time and frequency synchronizing. So it's in channel, it coordinates the time as what independent what clocks in the in the network. Then the frequency synchronization is more of a, it's also called the clock synchronization, which means that basically the signals are maintained at a specific relationship, what in frequency or phase. So that is about that. And then um, it also works on the, the voice uh, transmission, whether it's what full duplex or half duplex, that's in both direction or what a single direction. And then after it has gone through these same steps of what encoding and what encrypting the data, now it also does the reverse. So for the reverse of maybe encoding, it was of decoding. So if it, if it decodes the if it encodes the message, it also what decodes, decrypts the information. Then we also have what random access detection. Okay. And then we have timing advances. And then uplink channel measurement. So these are all basic functionalities of our BTS. Let's have a quick look at the, the base uh, controller, that's our BSC. So you can see in the diagram here, uh, on your left side, we have the mobile station which is made up of the SIM card and then the mobile equipment or the terminal equipment. So from the mobile station to the BTS, um, you have the interface there, the UM interface. And then from the BTS, it connects to the BSC. So from, from the BSC, then we go straight more of the core side. So our focus is on the BSC and the BTS. So we'll not go into that aspect. So we have the BSC connecting to what? Two BTSs here. So from the BTS to the BSC, we have the ABIS interface. Then from the BTS to the mobile station, we have the UM interface. 
Now, the function of this uh, BSC is that it manages the radio resources for one or more BTSs. So, there the are radio resources with respect to uh, cells, with respect to time slots, with respect to uh, channels, channels for voice, channels for data. So, this uh, BSC uh, helps to manage the radio resources among all the BTSs to which it is connected to. So, all the radio resources are being managed in a proper order, sometimes also based on the planning, which is also done in the network. And then it also controls the BTSs. Okay, so you can sometimes uh, have traffic uh, routing or routing of traffic, which is normally done by the core network uh, planning or design team. Sometimes they can route traffic to a particular BTS, or maybe they can say, okay, let 40% of traffic to go to this particular BTS, and then maybe 60% of traffic to go to this particular BTS. So all this is planning work. So these BSCs, they control the BTSs and then they help us to what? To manage the, the traffic on these routes. And then we have also our handoff management and control. And then it also helps in what? In the radio uh, channel uh, setup and then the frequency uh, hopping, which is uh, basically spreading uh, a signal among a wide range of uh, frequencies to prevent what is called uh, interference so so the, our bsc helps also to prevent interference in the signaling messages as well so it manages all these uh, radio uh, resources uh, together with what the bts uh, functionalities so let's have a quick look at uh, the summary of the lessons that we've learned today uh, the first thing is uh, a base station subsystem consists of a base station controller and one or more base transceiver stations. So you can have uh, a BSS network or base subsystem network. You can have a BSC connecting to what? One or more BTSs. The second point is that each base transceiver station defines a single cell, what you normally call the CGI. So, a base transceiver station defines a particular cell. Um, the third one is a cell can have a radius of between 100 meters to 35 kilometers, depending on the environment. Now, the next one is a base station controller may be connected with a BTS. It may control multiple BTS units and hence multiple cells. So a particular BSC can be connected to let's say five BTSs. Now these five BTSs each represent a particular cell. So so if you have one BSC connecting to what to five BTSs, in actual fact, what that BS is controlling what five cell sites. So I'm sure that that one is clear. So the next one is uh, the interface between the BTSs and the BSs is the ABS interface. The next one is the tower, the antennas on the tower, and the BTS are totally called the cell site. So I'm sure you've enjoyed this lesson for today and I wish you all the best. Hope we meet in our next discussion. Thank you and have a great day.